my story consists of a lot of drug using, a lot of prostitution, a lot of street living, and a lot of criminal. This is what my story consists of. Darnell, uh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? I, I grew up in a city outside of San Francisco called Pittsburgh. It's outside of Oakland, between Frisco and Oakland. Uh, I'm 48 years old at, at this time. Uh, tell, tell me about your family. My family, I have two sisters, one brother. My mom died in 217. Uh, that's all that's left, it's just me, two sisters and one brother. And and how, me. how was your childhood? It was pretty rough, it was pretty bad. I grew up in the projects in uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, from, I think, I, we got there in 1972. In 1972, I think I was five, six years old, seven, something like that. And uh, one of my mother's boyfriends, uh, he had a tendency of keep looking at me all the time because I was a little guy, first of all, and he felt that, you know, that I was a guy that maybe he wanted to try. But anyway, to move right along, uh, I was molested by him three times. I never told my mother until two years later. I finally, you know, told her exactly what he had done. And, you know, she didn't accept it because she didn't believe me because I waited so long to tell. Um, so that kind of stuck with me for a long time. And as I got older, I, I just couldn't trust people. I couldn't trust, especially men that were older than me. I couldn't trust them. I couldn't be around them. I couldn't stay in a room too long with them because I was scared. I was really afraid. Uh, as time went on, uh, I, I, I alienated myself because of that fact. Uh, I started using drugs at 13. Uh, my first choice of drugs was alcohol. And from alcohol, I started using cocaine. I, I didn't smoke anything. I just put it in my nose and I didn't get an effect. And I always thought about it, like, what, what does it does? So it really didn't do anything for me. So as time went on, by the time I was 15, I learned about freebasing. Back then, they called it freebasing. And uh, this girl showed me how to freebase, and I, I learned how to freebase. And at that time, whenever I ran out of money, I went out and I sold my body to get the money for the freebase. Uh, that went on for a couple of years, maybe three years. And then after that, I, I did my first prison term by the time I was 17 years old. Uh, I did a prison term for uh, breaking an entry and uh, robbery, stealing, stealing money from an old guy. He was a trick and I stole some money from him and I ran off and he called the police on me anyway. I did time for that. Uh, I did until I was 22 years old, from 17 to 22, I got out. And you know, my criminology had advanced. Now I know how to do a lot of things. So I started boosting. I started running with crowds that, you know, shot dope and, and you know, I got introduced to Heron and, and from Heron, it just took me to a whole nother phase because Heron is a drug that you have to have it. You cannot go a day without it. So I had to go and plan my day every day. I had to have my dope at night and I had to plan my day during the day to go get money for my dope at night. And I did that for four and a half years straight. No breaks, no nothing. Uh, I started, you know, coming to a point to where I started getting sick, you know, where I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't do anything, I didn't even think right. So I stopped showering, I stopped, you know, taking care of my hygiene, I stopped doing a lot of things. I became a full-fledged junkie. And I, I started sleeping on abandoned houses. And whatever I was able to get me a fix, I did it. Whatever it took to get it, I did it. I did that for years. Uh, by the time I was 25 years old, I had become uh, someone that what they would call, what the law would call a, a, a full-fledged criminal. You know, I had started, you know, doing all kinds of things. Forgery, burglary, uh, uh, robbery, uh, all kinds of things I was doing to get my fix because I'm a full-fledged heroin addict. And I went through that for six years until I was 32 years old. And I did another prison term and I cleaned up because I did five years in prison. So I kind of cleaned up. And when I came home and I told myself and I told my family, my siblings that are still here with me today, that I would not use any drugs no more in my life. That lasted about seven months. Uh, I meet a female at a club and she had some coke. 
And I let her do her thing. I didn't touch it. And uh, on the way home, she told me, you spend a night, we're going to do some coke, and we kick back. And I went into and I tried some coke. And I end up wanting more because coke is a trigger for heroin. So once I tried the coke and I told her, well, I need something more. Can we go get it? So I found my way downtown. Uh, I got some heroin and she had never messed with heroin. So I introduced her to the needle. And from that point on, for eight days, me and her shot heroin and ran the streets. Uh, she finally uh, got arrested for uh, shoplifting. And they put a restraining order on me. I also got arrested too. They put a restraining order on me where I could not have any dealings with her. So I went in and I did 14 months on that case. I got out and I went straight to the dope dealer. It's, 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 it's really true. You know, you're out by eight and you see in the dealer by 12. That's really true. That happens in real life. Uh, after I seen the dealer, I got me some heroin. I laid on the curb. I vomited everywhere because I was sick because I hadn't done it in a while. And, you know, your first dose is very bad. Uh, I laid there for two days is what I remember. Two days. People say I was there longer, but I remember two days. Uh, and I finally woke up and some guys took me to a mission. Uh, they call it the L.A. Mission. It's here on Fifth and uh, uh, Wall Street, I believe. Uh, they took me there. They put me in there. I was supposed to stay clean for 30 days in order for me to feed the artillery of the, of the mission. Uh, I think I lasted four days. Four days after I ate and slept a couple of days, I was back on the streets and I sold my body and I went and I got me some heroin. And uh, at that time, the guy that I sold my body to, he was infected. He, he, he had HIV. But so happened, it didn't affect me. For some reason, I don't know, because I wasn't safe. I just did what I had to do and to get my hair on. So as time went on, you know, I, I'm 36 years old at this time. So as time went on, I started finding myself not only tricking, but I'm also letting people take me to mountains, to, you know, resorts, uh, uh, hideaways, caves, uh, uh, tunnels. I'm, I'm doing all these things just to get my hair on. Uh, one day, one, one time, I stayed in the cave for nine days. No heater, no, act, no nothing. And I didn't eat for six of them days. When I finally did eat something, I wasn't able to eat it because I hadn't been accustomed to food at that time. So I wasn't able to eat it. Uh, I, I eventually got away from the guy and I made it back down into the city limits. And once I got to the city limits, I met a guy and he took me to Las Vegas. Uh, I ended up in Vegas for 18 days with this guy. Uh, he had me tricking with other guys and he paid me $20 each guy. So I, I went through that as long as I was able to get my hair on. I did that for uh, 18 days and I finally got away from here. I ended up in Whiskey, uh, Whiskey Peak. Uh, I, I found uh, what they call a, a Bravo house where you know, women go and sell their bodies and you know, they pay the house. So anyway, I found one and it was for men. So I ended up staying in a Bravo house about, I think, uh, four and a half months. I, I, you know, I paid my tithes, I did my tricks, and I went out and got my hair on. I did that for four and a half months. And uh, they finally bust me one time. I had hair on in the room and they kicked me out. So I, now I'm in, down in Whiskey Peaks in Nevada, uh, running around with just hair on in my possession and no money. So I found a guy that had a mobile home uh, he let me stay in his mobile home for eight days while I give him drugs. As long as I was able to give him drugs, I was able to stay there. Uh, once I ran out of funds to get drugs, I had to go into the city and do some things to get drugs. So I went in and at this time uh, they had a sting operation going on with male prostitution. And I didn't know because I was sick and I just wanted drugs. So I went in a bar, matter of fact, the name of the club is Monte Carlo, it's the casino. I went in there and I met the guy, he took me up to his room and you know, as soon as I told him about the price and everything, they came in and they arrested me. So I ended up doing uh, 32 months in Nevada behind male prostitution. So uh, I get out of that, now I'm, I'm pressing 40. I'm, I'm 48 now, so this is, I'm turning 40 now at this time. 
And uh, I haven't changed n- nothing. I haven't changed nothing. I, I still have the same mentality. I still have the way, it's the same way of thinking. And, and you know, I, I just didn't change anything. And at this time, I'm 36 years old and I'm still doing the same thing. You know, uh, I don't know too many people that have survived that length of time, but I, you know, I don't know if it was God, I don't know what it was, but I survived. Now, I'm in Nevada and I'm stuck, I'm stranded. I don't have nowhere to go, but I have drugs. So I walk around, I find little places to sit and shoot my dope. I did that for my first night. The second night, I woke up, I was sitting on the curve and it was raining and I was sick because I had ran out of drugs. Now I'm about maybe 22, 23 miles from the Las Vegas Boulevard, the city of Las Vegas. So now I either go back that way or I go the other way towards Los Angeles. So I chose Los Angeles. I started hitchhiking. I meet a guy and his wife on the highway uh, back to Los Angeles. And they're groupies. They like to have sex with each other and they like for guys to watch them have sex and they're paid. So I needed dope. So I made the guy, I, basically what I did, I kidnapped both of them and made them drive me to Los Angeles before we do anything so I can get my drugs. So once I got to Los Angeles, I ended up on 5th and Crocker, and I got me a gram of dope, and I did my dope, and me and this couple went rented a room, and we was in the room for 11 days uh, doing what we do, you know, sexing each other, partying, eating food, throwing stuff around, not showering, not doing anything that normal humans does. We didn't do any of that. So as that passed, uh, I finally got to the point where I robbed them. I, you know, they fell asleep one night and they had travel checks and a few uh, currency. So I took everything and I left. I ended up on San Pedro and six. Uh, I went out and bought me a tent and I sat in my tent for 18 months, shooting heroin, uh, uh, a party in, doing anything, you know, doing the things that criminal street people does. I did that. So now it's 2017. This is another year. Uh, I went out to buy some heroin and the police followed me to the place to buy the drugs because they knew me from me running around downtown all day, every day. So they had a good familiar of me. And they followed me to the dealer and they ran in and as soon as the dealer gave me the package and I gave him the money, they ran in and they arrested everybody. Uh, they took me to jail. Uh, I did another two years, uh, two, well, two and a half years on that case. I got out 2019, February. Uh, I was out for four days and I needed some heroin because I had been missing it for almost two and a half years. I don't know why I needed it, because I, was, I had did without for two and a half years, but I still, in my mind, and my craving, being here on the streets is a trigger for me. So when I seen the streets and everything was still the same, I needed some heroin. And I went and got me some heroin uh, February of 2019. And I got the heroin, I sat there, I did my drugs on the streets. Uh, it's a little place called Fresh Start. Uh, I did it in front of there, I did my dope, and I, I passed out. I basically od okay? Uh, once I came to, they, I was in a hospital with IVs all over me and, and you know, I, I just couldn't take it. And I snatched all that stuff out and I walked out with a gown on. I left all my property, everything, because I needed some more heroin. So I ended up back on Fifth and Crocker to get me some more heroin. And I got some more heroin and at that time, I had heroin still in the needle in my arm with me tied up and passed out again. At this time, it was the police that talked, stopped me and came to me and took me to jail for under the influence. Okay, my record shows that I'm a heroin user, I'm a dope dealer, I'm a forger, I'm a burglar, I'm all kind of things. So the D- district attorney told me the only way they're gonna put me in a program if I do a year in the county jail first and then they will put me in a program. I recently did the year in the county jail. I was released uh, March the 3rd, 2020. And this is the end of my story.
All right, Darnell. Thank you very much. Do, do you have Do you have kids here? Excuse me. Do you have any children? No, I don't. I no don't. kids. No. And you've been out how many days? Two days. Two days. Well, from what's the date? Today's Friday. I mean, what's the date? Oh, I got the date. On the today's, third. today is March sixth. Uh, I got out. I've been out three days. Three days. I got out on the third. So I haven't done do, do, no dope or nothing. So jail is a great way to get clean, right? That's the only way I get clean. So you're clean right now? Yes, I've been clean for three days. Well, I've been well, clean since the jail yeah, and now. Yeah. So this is a trigger for me. No shit. Yeah. I mean, so so what do you think the chances are of you staying clean now? Well, I'm gonna use the resources. I'm gonna I'm gonna work that first. Get, get the fuck out of this neighborhood. Exactly. I'm gonna use the resources. You're, they're, you're, gonna you're, me, <laughs> they're gonna send me to a program that's in Simi Valley. So I, I've never been out there. I don't know anything about it. I'm going there. I'm going there uh, Monday. Monday they send me. I mean, it's like, it's like you haven't had sex for three years, and, and you're in a brothel. Yeah, you just get the fuck out of here. I'm gonna go, man. You got to get out of here, dude. I right go. now. I'm I got gonna, I got I got a lot more to go with that, but I just want to give you the basic yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. No, but but I, I'm just worried about your next move. Yeah. I, hey, it's been good. My three days. I, I stepped in tents for the three days. People coming and using drugs, and I, it didn't bother me. So I, I know I'm on a good page. Do you have I'm, any family you can go to or anything like that? Nothing here. Nothing. Nothing, nothing here. Nothing. What, what, what about elsewhere? Excuse me? What about elsewhere? Other cities? Oh, yeah. I have, I have an auntie in Ohio, and I have someone in Texas. And my sisters and brothers are in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe relying on some family for a while just to... Well, they told me if I can clean up, you know, if I can stay clean while I'm on the streets, not while I'm in jail. This is the only thing that my sisters and brothers don't like. I can clean in jail. No, I, anybody can but, do that. But, you know, when I'm on the streets, they tell me, you stay clean for six months, I will send you a plane ticket, bring you here, and give you a job. <laughs> this is what my sister tells me. No, they're, they're right, too. And they're right, man. Yeah. They are, they are right, no, man. They're, they're smart. You know, I went out, I bought me some new shoes. I had never done this. I spent my money on heroin, man. I went out and bought shoes yesterday. I bought pants. I bought a shirt. I did this. I didn't spend my money on heroin. So I, I know I'm on a good page. I'm, I, I know that not only him, but my heart is telling me, try it. Just try it and see how far you can go with it. I mean, all you got to do is walk up and down these streets and see what the... Man, it's, it's, <laughs> it's when horrible. I ran into him, I was going, I was, he was like, well, you, you, you got somewhere to sleep tonight? I said, no, so I'm just going to kick it. He said, look, come on, I got somebody I want you to talk to. Man. Yeah. You want to get your story off your chest? I said, I shared my story before in the AA. He said, no. You can get your story off your chest for real. So he, that's why he brought me here. Cool. Well, I, I don't know. I wish you luck, and uh, I hope you get get the hell out of here as fast as possible. I do too. Because because you got to be three times as ten times as strong to to, re to resist here. Because it's every every ten feet. You know, last night I slept in a tent, and every twenty minutes, someone was coming over there. Yeah. And all I did was pull the blanket over my head. I mean, just, you, you walked on any block, there's what? There's 25 tents on that block. Every single one of those tents <laughs> is either heroin, crack, it's really, crystal meth. It's really, it's really every single one. real function disease, man. Yeah. It's a function disease for the ones that, I mean, it's, it's bad. Man. I seen it last night. I, I, I mean, every 20 minutes, I, I'm just saying 20 minutes. It might have been sooner than that. Yeah. But someone was coming in, uh, uh, and, and he was like, can, he, can, he sit down? can they sit down? I'm like, go ahead. I just want to go to sleep. Yeah. And they did their thing. They did their thing. And I can hear it. I can hear the, the moans and how it is. I can hear everything. And it's, you, see, it's, you, you, you know, a heroin junkie is a person that he, he feels the power once he gets it. He's weak as a puppy when, without it. But once he gets it, it's like Superman, man. It's like the, 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 crypt, the krypton is gone. You're no longer sitting around the Krypton. You are back with your strength. And then when you put it in there, you even get stronger, in, 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 not physically, not even mentally. It's just something that you think, that something that you just run through your mind like, ah, you know? Yeah. And I heard that last night, man, from different people sitting down doing it. And that's something that I did for years. And I always look for that. It's something that you chase. You want to get that first feeling, you know. And I, you know, and I was strong enough to take that blanket and cover over my head, and I went. I really went to sleep. And I woke up this morning. I went and bought me shoes, I, and I felt good, man. Yeah. And I ain't felt good like this being on the streets in a long time. Well, I hope you stay strong. In a long time, man. Stay strong, dude.
All right, I appreciate you know you taking my story in, man. Yeah, man. You know, love you for that. Man. Good luck. Okay, thank you. Thank you, man.